All right, Shalom, Mike. Shalom. It's your brother Karab from GMS Miami. First and foremost, want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Racha Kodash, which is to say the name of the Heavenly Father in the name of His Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit in the ancient Hebrew. I want to give double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone who rule well, the top Bible teachers on the planet Earth today. And also want to send out a hearty Shalom to the sincere brothers throughout the four corners of the earth that push the unadulterated truth of the Bible and risk your lives doing so in efforts of waking up to hopefully let of the nation of Israel and Shalom to the sisters that subscribe as well. Okay, and this lesson is going to be entitled Divide and Conquer. Okay, Divide and Conquer. And um, this lesson is pretty much inspired by uh, a lesson the brother, uh, the head brother out there in uh, uh, GMS, uh, GMS Birmingham, the uh, Alabama uh, faction, um, and his personal paid mysteries of the kingdom. And what he went into was uh, that the word was not set up to bring everybody together, you know, because uh, there's, there's this preconceived notion in the world that, you know, the, the Heavenly Father is all inclusive, okay? But the fact of the matter is, he's all exclusive. Okay, and the exclu ex exclusivity um, uh, pertains to the nation of Israel. You see, okay, and he, and even amongst the nation of Israel, he has an exclusive uh, uh, exclusive body of men. Okay, or people. Okay, that are going to be delivered. Okay, amongst all of the nation of Israel, because the fact of the matter is, all of Israel should not be saved, at least. On the first resurrection, okay, not like it was during the times of uh, of Moses, okay, uh, uh, during the Exodus when the Lord brought everyone out of the nation of Israel. He's not doing that this time, okay. The undesirables and the ones that will not repent of our nation are going to be put to death over here in America and abroad, where wherever they are, okay. But the point the point I'm trying to convey is that. You know, this word is not meant to, to bring everybody together. It's not. Okay. And um you find that out in the in the in the very beginning of the uh, of the Bible, man, in the book of Genesis, around about the eleventh chapter, okay? You find out that the most high is a hundred percent exclusive, man. Okay, and was never about all people coming together and being one. Okay. And all you have to really do is look at nature. You see dogs with dogs, cats with cats. You see, uh, birds with birds, you know, zebras with zebras, antelope with antelope. Now, there are times where they converge, you know, for, for, at watering holes. But for the most part, most part, you know, even amongst the animal kingdom, you know, there's division. OK, and ultimately, that's how the Heavenly Father set it up. OK, so I'll just bring out some pre precepts just to edify that point. We'll start here in the book of Genesis, chapter 11. It started one. It says, and the whole earth was of one language and one speech. Okay, and that's cognizant of what the elites or the you know the wicked rulers of this society uh, want and have always pushed since they uh, came into power. You see, it says um, verse two, and it came to pass uh, as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, go to let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad about the face of the earth. So like about upon the face of the whole earth. Verse five. And Yahweh came down to see the city. And tower, Salakia. And Yahweh came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. Verse 6. And Yahweh said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they began to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Verse 7. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language that they may not understand one one another's speech, okay? So here it is, you have the Heavenly Father. At, at the top, we say, it said what? 
and the whole earth, verse one, and the whole earth was one language and a one speech. Okay, and we find out here in the verse, uh, verse eight, that the heavenly Father was not was was against that man. Um, but well, basically from verse six on down to eight, you find out the heavenly Father was dead set against that. Okay, and to the point he did what he confounded the languages. Okay, uh, verse eight. Uh, we read seven again it says go to let us go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech verse 8 so Yahweh scattered them abroad from thence upon the face upon the face of all the earth and they left off to build the city okay uh, verse 9 therefore is the name of it called uh, Babel because Yahweh did there confound the language of all the earth and from thence did Yahweh scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth? Okay, so that's clear cut and shows that the Most High is a separatist, man. Okay, and he separated the nations because why? That's how he wanted it. Okay, the scriptures tell you there's no unrighteousness with the Heavenly Father. Okay, it's just that uh, the rulers of this place now, okay, the prince of the power of the air, which is Shaitan and his physical counterpart Esau, are just dead set against what the scriptures say. You know, the Heavenly Father wants exclusivity they want inclusivity you know and that's just uh his mental makeup you know that's how the heavenly father created him to be adverse to what's righteous you see but the fact of the matter is the most high confounded the languages because he didn't want everybody speaking one language and he didn't want everybody being uh one people okay and you hear that what well, first thing comes to mind is what the new world order okay one world bank one world government system you see Showing you who the wicked is, man. Okay, and he actually has plans of doing it and has began to do it. Okay, uh, 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 America is a microcosm of what they want to do on the whole planet. You see, it's that melting pot where all nations come together. Okay, but ultimately, the most high is going to destroy America. Why? Because uh, the philosophy that he wants is not here at all. Okay, other than with the prophets that teach the truth of the matter. Okay. This is um let's go with uh let's go with Deuteronomy. Yeah, let's go with Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Uh Deuteronomy 32 and let's start at uh Seven, remember the days of old, consider the years of many generations. Ask the Father, and he will show thee thy elders, and and they will tell thee. Verse 8, here's the point. It says, when the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds, okay, of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Okay. So not only is the most high separatist, but he's a favoritist. Okay. And his favorite people, or his chosen people, are who? The nation of Israel. Okay. And the key word here in verse 8 when the most high divided to the nations their inheritance. Okay. So that's just another insight on the mindset of the Heavenly Father. He's about division. Okay. He wants uh, uh, every nation. To, to uh, basically deal with their own nation, man. Okay, and we we see the uh, result of us intermingling and in, uh, you know making wives of the other nations and, and 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 making husbands of the other nations. Okay, it further threw us into a rut. Okay, because when you understand the divine principle behind it, is that the Most High wants to build up each nation or each kind or each species of animal within itself. You know. And that's the be that's the beautification of that uh, 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 div uh, diverseness, you see. But that's what the scriptures teach us, the mindset, okay, or at least what he wants us to know and how he wants us to operate, okay. And the scriptures tell us that um, the Most High was against all people coming together, okay. And when you read the scriptures, you see it clear, clear as day, man, okay. The scriptures were not intended. For all people on the planet to bring all people together. Okay? Actually, it's not intended to bring all of Israel together. Okay? 
Only the elect of the nation of Israel. You see? Okay, let's... Uh, yeah, let's go to Matthews. As a matter of fact, I'll stay in Matthews for the duration of the lesson. Um, yeah, let's do Matthew 10. You know? And showing you the narrative never changed, man. Okay? Even with this, when uh, the Son of the Most High came on the scene, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah. This is Matthew chapter 10. Matthew 10 and 34, it says, Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword, okay? And when you look at it in a literal sense, what does a sword do? It divides, man, okay? Whether you thrust, thrust, thrusting it through or you're hacking something off, it divides. So that's what that sword represents, man, division, okay? And destruction and, 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 and dividing, you see? Uh, verse 25 for I am come to set a man at variance against his father okay let's look at this word variance <sighs> variance is that the G 1369 <sighs> at variance to cut in two two parts cleave asunder sever okay <sighs> so the presence of Yahweh Shah our Lord is gonna sever okay <sighs> And he said he came to set a man at variance with his father. And what does that mean? It means basically, look, if your father doesn't believe in what in what the scriptures say in the true doctrine, then guess what? You're going to separate from each other. You're not going to, hey, because uh, the scriptures say, can two walk together lest they be agreed? You see? So the spirit of your how about Shemiah is are going to create division, okay, amongst a father and his son. And, and, and either way, if the son doesn't believe, okay, the spirit of Yahweh by Shemiah is going is going to be a dividing between them. You see, it says, uh, verse thirty five: For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter in law against her mother in law, and a man's foes shall be they of his own household. You see, showing you the vibration that Yahweh Shah pushed. Okay, and really what he's saying: Look, you either going to be on the righteous team. Okay, which is the winning team, or you either gonna be on the losing, uh, 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 the losing, um, the the losing team. You understand? And that's how it breaks down. Uh, verse thirty-seven: He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Okay, so that's just pushing that further, pushing that vibration. You gonna have to choose, man. You have to choose righteousness or wickedness. Now, if you and your father agree and are in the faith, okay, then there's no need for div uh, 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 division. Likewise with the mother and the daughter-in-law, okay? But they're just showing you. <coughs> Salakia. But they're just showing you the mindset and the intentions of the scriptures because when you read the book of John, the first chapter, it says what? That, um, <coughs> Salakia. That in the beginning was the word, okay? And and the word is who? Yahweh Shai. Okay, so here he's saying out of his own mouth when he's flesh and blood that he came to uh, 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 bring division ultimately. He came not to send peace but a sword, okay? Uh, I think I had a little more. Let me see. Uh... Matter of fact, let me let me look up. Let me see something. Yeah, there we go. Luke, uh, Luke twelve and forty nine. It says, "I am come to send fire on the earth." And what will I if it be already kindled? And this is the Messiah speaking, 30, uh, 36. Salakia, 50. But I have a baptism to be baptized with. And how am I straightened till it... Uh, Salak, yeah, and how am I straightened till it be accomplished? Verse 51. Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth. 
or tell you nay, but rather division. You see, that's his purpose. That was his purpose when he came upon the earth. OK, and then the spirit that's being pushed out and ultimately from the beginning, man. OK, we just read it in the book of Genesis when, the, uh, uh, you know, the Tower of Babel was being erected. You see, it says, suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth, tell you nay, but rather division. Verse 52. For from henceforth, there shall be five in one house divided, three against two, and two against three. Verse 53. The father shall be divided against the son, and the son against the father, the mother against the daughter, and the daughter against the mother, the mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. You see? So that's that's the vibration. That's the vibration that uh, uh, Yahweh Shah came pushing, man. Okay, and it's continuing to push. Okay, and it's and that's the way it's gonna be. Okay, uh, uh, forever. Okay, because that's how it was intended. Okay, obviously us in our disobedience. Okay, uh, uh, from the law, statutes, and commandments, which is our strength in the sight of the nations, we we forsook, and now hey, the word the, the earth is uh, is 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 a hundred percent exactly opposite of what the heavenly Father intended, man. You see. Um, yeah, so that's it on that. We'll get one more and close out. This is the book of Matthews, chapter 22. Yeah, this is uh, Matthew chapter 22, verse 31. I'm gonna jump around a little bit. Matthew 22 and 31. It says, But as touching the resurrection of the dead, have you not read that which was spoken unto you by the Most High, saying, I am the power of Abraham and the power of Isaac? And the power and the power of Jacob. The most high is is not the power of the dead, but of the living. Uh, so like, yeah. It says uh, verse 33. And when the multitude heard this, they were astonished at his doctrine. But when the Pharisee had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, they were gathered together. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment and uh, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Yahweh I said unto them. Uh, hold on one second. One second. I think I'm reading the wrong precept. <sighs> Yo, one second. Yeah, I think I'm reading the wrong precept. It's a lot. <sighs> Bear with me, Bible question. Yeah, here we are, Salakia. We're reading the wrong one. Uh, one second. Yeah, here it is, Matthew 25 and 31. It says, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. Verse 33. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand. <coughs> Salakia. It says, and he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Okay. And the sheep represent who? The elect amongst the nation of Israel and the goats represent everybody else. OK, but ultimately, uh, 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 you know, speaking of Esau, Edom, OK, because it tells you about that goat, you know, in the book of Daniel. But uh, the reality is, OK, if you're not moving in the likeness of the sheep, man, you're a goat anyway. You know, uh, verse 34, it says, then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, come ye blessed of my father inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world okay so once again you're seeing that vibration of separation or div uh, division it says uh verse 35 
For I was in hunger and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger and ye took me in. Verse 36, naked and ye clothed me. I was sick and ye visited me. I was in prison and ye came unto me. <laughs> then, uh, verse 37, then shall the righteous answer him saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hunger and fed thee or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and, and took thee in or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? Verse 40. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of these least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. You see? So that's showing you the division, man. The sheeps are going to be on the right hand and the goats on the left hand side. Okay. And he's going to destroy everything that's on the left, man. Okay. But once again, showing you the spirit, okay, of the true spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, which is to separate ultimately the righteous from the wicked. Okay. So that, like it says in the Lord's Prayer, uh, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay. But just to destroy that preconceived notion that the Bible is to, uh, uh gather everyone together under the same uh uh you know b uh, banner that that is absolutely a farce okay and it has been since the beginning of time okay so lord willing i was edified with that i say shalom